and welcome to Murphy's Garden and this is part two on how we transformed um, a field or effectively a large open space into a garden. So this area um, was, um, I can hardly remember, but this was just part of the field. Um, we decided to put this area in and make it a kind of a transitional area from one, one room to the next and it's, we, we, this is our parterre so we've divided it into four and we've used these um, cobble sets to do that and then we've got just box hedging and roses um, and again backed by you so again it gives that feeling of enclosure and um, brings the view in only to open up again so again that that sort of feeling of um, revealing something beyond so um, this area as if, if those of you that watch the videos will know I have got ideas of changing these roses I'm just not happy with them but um, that's for um, a bit later on in the year when um, bare root season comes in I'm going to change these roses to white roses. So this is our vegetable patch which as you can see is now quite a big site um, but when we first moved in as I discussed earlier we put the vegetable patch um, um, down at the side of the property but it was quite small and didn't get enough sunshine so we relocated it here and the intention was it just was to end here but of course me being me I filled it and wanted more space and more room so this area was just grass, it was just part of the field. We moved the cherry trees, which we'd put in, I'll show you that later on where they were originally. We put them here and they were just in the field. And then afterwards we decided, oh, we've missed a trick here. We should have extended the vegetable patch right down to the bottom. Um, so we've, we have left the cherries in. I think we just need to keep them topped and then that will sort of trim the roots and keep the roots from getting too big and going under and coming up in the vegetable patch. But they do look pretty, so we'll leave them. But um, so the vegetable patch goes right down to the bottom and it's great now because we've got so much space um, to grow anything and everything. And we really do. And we really um, get the benefit of this area. We absolutely love our fresh veg and the children um, both, or particularly Joshua, loves vegetable growing. So he really helps me with that and likes picking all the crops. So after we managed to move the electric box, um, we were in a really good position in that we created this um, new little space and Alistair had the idea of siting a greenhouse here at the time. I thought it wouldn't get enough sun, but the way the sun rises over there in the east and comes over here actually is brilliant. It gets the sun most of the day. Sometimes we do actually have to put up shading because it gets too hot, but um, it's a really, really good space. It's very enclosed um, and it's just lovely. So it's a, just an addition of something. It was a, an area that was just doing absolutely nothing. So from that, we've created something quite lovely and special. This is the area that we use to just bring on plants. So constantly bringing things on. And as I was saying earlier, earlier on, um, here's some examples of, this is um, Olivia. So Olivia works in a nursery and she's a bit of an expert at taking cuttings. And this is Pittisborum Tom Thumb that she's taken cuttings of and she's done, she's done probably about, I don't know, 100 little plants. So hopefully they'll take because I want to use them elsewhere in the garden. Um, and this is, um, oh, this is Crococia. That's a nice plant that I've got. I just thought it might be nice to try that one as well. That's a very woody cutting. So we'll see whether they take. We've got rose cuttings. We've got hydrangea. We've got all sorts of things, but it's worth having a go and they're all plants for free. So. Alistair just bought me a nice cup of tea. So um, now we're in the big borders up the top. Um, this was, as I said, a field, um, knee high, um, or waist high in weeds. Um, so this was really, really challenging. And we just decided one day we hired a, a turf cutter um, and we marked out, I think we had a spray can and we marked out, we'd measured all the borders. Um, to, because it, the problem is with this garden, it has to be symmetrical. So obviously when we did that lower part of the garden we didn't own this um, so when we stood up there we had to make sure that everything was in alignment and in fact it wasn't and we did have to shift some of the borders over a bit further down the garden so um, I, to this day I don't really know how we managed to pull this one off but we hired the turf cutter and we um, cut out the borders and then we um, covered them with um, we had I don't know, I think it was like 10 tonnes of horse manure and, we, and it was quite fresh horse manure, but we piled it on really, really high and that suppressed the weeds and um, over the winter, the, the cold weather obviously broke it down and um, then we started planting in the spring. Um, it's been a big learning curve um, with this, you know, 
big borders are very daunting to plant and over the years I've got it completely wrong the first couple of years but it's starting to look quite good uh, this year has been the first year that I've been really pleased with them um, so yeah it's just looking at the plants that that do well here and um, sort of I'll split a few and um, just multiply the stock a little bit more and infill any gaps but yeah I'm really really delighted with this area. So one of the first things really to consider really before you get carried away with planting is to consider um, the wind in the garden and it, the exposure maybe if you're by a coast or something like that you've got high winds coming in off off the sea or in this area we've got um, wide open countryside for miles in that direction. Um, now the nice thing about that is we've got lovely views from the house but the downside was that the winds come in off the field and I quickly find out that everything I planted I would nurture and bring on these lovely little seedlings only for them to be completely flattened by the wind. So that was something we really had to get a handle on. Um, initially again we made mistakes as we do with everything. We planted a beech hedge and the beech hedge was very small took such a long time to establish after a year or two it just had barely grown at all and with it being um, deciduous we felt that maybe that wasn't the right choice so we opted for um, Lalandi which obviously isn't a terribly popular hedge with lots of people but it was a fantastic windbreaker from day one it was quite it's quite big um, when we bought it it's cheap to buy and we put it in and instantly we had um, a wind barrier wind break so and we moved the beech hedge because the beech hedge is such a lovely hedge we moved it and as you can see we then did two layers of hedging so we've got this beautiful beech which turns this golden orange in the autumn and uh, looks beautiful and against the green backdrop of the Lalandi just looks really really good and it gives the the double buffer of wind so we'll probably let this grow to maybe about sort of five foot in, in height but, and we've got it in, in wrapping around the whole garden, like big arms around the whole garden, and they just enclose everything and just um, really, really protect it. And we've got the box um, as an addition to on the front as well, which just kind of feels, holds everything together. So um, definitely before you get carried away on planting, get the structure in, get the hedges in. Um, and the nice thing about this is because the incline of countryside rises up, when you're in the house, you can still see the countryside beyond over the hedge. So it, it doesn't, it may block the view when you're in the garden, but from the house, you can still see the sheep and all the cows um, in the fields, which is lovely. So this area is um, one with a slightly different feel. It feels much more modern. We've used more modern materials. And I think because it is very sheltered from the rest of the garden, it kind of sits alone. And it was quite a nice opportunity just to try something new. Um, so yeah, this has just been completed and it's um, we've really used it a lot this summer. I'm really, really delighted with it. Um, so this area, so we've um, finished the seating area and that's looking good. Um, we're still now playing around with this area. This area we had visions of having sort of, not, not so much a winter garden, but an area that does look good during the winter months. Um, so um, I think that was partly influenced because we were designing it at that time of year. But we have got a lot of plants here that, that do look particularly attractive at that time of year, like the Acer Grisium and the Calicarpa. So it'll be really interesting to see what they're like um, this winter. So obviously it comes to a very abrupt ending at the, uh, at the end here, but we have got visions of, of extending this pathway and adding a bit more interest. Talked about how this side of the garden is all um, in alignment with the house and very symmetrical, but over this side, um, particularly the woodland garden and perhaps with this area, we're looking at different ideas. So we're just playing around with um, perhaps curves, um, with lots of um, planting. We really want to have more shrubs and more trees and just explore um, different species and things that we haven't, we haven't currently got. So um, this is a quite a good tip to use a hoe. So if you are creating um, curves and things like that, if you use a hose which has been sitting in the sun, it's quite warm, then it's quite pliable and it's got nice and bendy. And you can just play about and just try different things. And I don't know if this may not be the one we settle on, but we're just playing around at the moment. Um, and it's still early days, but this is part of the fun of it. The problem with this area, it was, um, as I say, just a field and you can see from the grass, it's practically dead. It's very, very unfertile land. It's very sandy. It's not very nice at all. So if we are going to do planting, we will need to put in lots of organic matter. Um, so yeah, so watch this space and we'll see what we do with this area. So that's really the end of the video. I just want to reflect on 
Although the garden has been a huge amount of work, um, I really have put a lot of um, blood, sweat and tears into this garden, but it has given back on so many levels, um, so much so that um, my daughter Olivia, who's now 18, is just starting um, in her RHS training, so it's influenced her career and hopefully that will be um, something, a lifelong um, dream that she will fulfil um, and learning lots about plants and having a whole career in that industry which is absolutely lovely. This garden has been so much more than just a garden, it's been a way of life for us and it's been something in which we've learned so much. I, every day, not a day goes by when I don't learn something new and, and that's what I love about it, it just keeps your brain active, keeps you always trying and experimenting with new things. and. Um, and I recommend anyone who's just starting out to just give it a go and you'll soon be hooked and you'll love it too. So thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.